So what we're going to do is practice the different scenarios that we have for SN2 and SN1 reactions. So in our first list over here, we have a bunch of SN2 reactions. And once we're done with these, then we're going to move on to SN1 reactions. So let's start off with this first one. So this first one, we just have this 2-chlorobutane and we have sodium iodide. Now, what's iodide in this situation? Well, iodide has a negative charge on it. So it's going to act as a nucleophile in the situation. So it's just going to simply kick out chlorine from a backside attack. And what do we mean by backside? It means it's going to have an inversion. So our final product is not going to look so, well, it will look like this. If you drew this answer, this is incorrect, simply because there's an inversion. It's a backside attack. It will not attack from the front. So just remember that. So once now that we know it's a backside attack, we know there's an inversion, we should be able to do all the rest of these just fine. So what about this next one? We have ammonia and an excess, and we have this 1-bromo-4-methylcyclohexane. So what do we want to do? Well, ammonia is going to act as a nucleophile. It's a nucleophile, weak base, and it's going to attack this carbon right here that has the bromine. And let's just look at what it looks like if we drew the conf chair conformation. We have our bromine going down, and we have our methyl going up. And if we had ammonia attack this, it'll just simply attack from this side. And so we end up with this chair conformation where ammonia is up and our methyl is up. So what does that mean? That means our final product looks like this, where our ammonia is up here. Now, here's the thing. Notice that the ammonia over, um, nitrogen over here has four bonds as a positive charge. And don't forget the methyl. So what's going to happen is we're just going to have another, another molecule of ammonia that's going to abstract one of those hydrogens. And so our true final product is a methyl over here that's going up and an amine that's going up. So that's our actual final product. Now what about this next one? Well, we have sodium methoxide attacking this molecule. And we have a new projection here. And that might freak you out, but we actually don't really need to draw this molecule out to do this. All we know is that there's an inversion and it's going to be backside attack. So the lone pair on this oxygen will for sure attack the bromine from the backside. So when we draw this, we're going to have this molecule instead. We're going to have CH3 here, H here, and our methoxide there. And on the back, we, have, we still have our methyl. We have our hydrogen down here and our other hydrogen over here. And so this is an eclipsed interaction, so you just might want to redraw this in a way that would make it look like this. So simply have your methyl here, your hydrogen there, your oxide there. And you can simply just move the methyl over here. So you have a methyl over here, hydrogen here, hydrogen there. And that way it's much better. Now what about this last one? Well, in this last one, we're going to draw it out so we can see what it looks like. And now I show you a neat little trick to be able to get this quickly. So if we draw this out, what this really looks like is something like this, where you have your two methyls here, right? And you have your bromine facing you, hydrogen facing you, and the other two hydrogens are back. And so if we have sodium iodide, like in the last situation, where it acted like a nucleophile, it's going to do a backsided attack and attack from over here. So what you get is this. We have your two methyls there, right? And now this hydrogen is going to come to the front because it got inverted and iodine is, is going to be in the back. And then these two hydrogens are still going to be like this. And so if we draw the Newman projection for this, what it ends up looking like is this with iodine on the left, hydrogen on the right. And then over here, hydrogen, hydrogen again. CH3, CH3. So what did, it what did actually happen? Well, bromine left and iodine basically came over here, right? And so this hydrogen just moved to this side. So the neat little trick is that you simply just invert the position. Instead of having bromine on the right, you just move that and put iodine on the left. So that's a little neat trick. So this is three different, four different examples of SN2 reactions. Now what about SN1 reactions? SN1 reactions, you can have different scenarios on how they work. 
So in this first one, we're just going to have a really simple one. We have ethanol and we have this tertiary chlorine. Well, what's going to happen is when you add heat, this is a symbol for heat, chlorine is going to leave. So you have this molecule that has a positive charge on this carbon. And it doesn't look like we can have any rearrangements. So simply, ethanol is just going to essentially come in, attack here, and then after the hydrogen on the oxygen is going to be abstracted by another ethanol molecule, your final product looks something like this. Remember, the hydrogen on the oxygen will be removed with another ethanol molecule. So that's our molecule right there. What about here? We have silver nitrate and methanol. Now, what does silver nitrate do? Silver nitrate forces an SN1 or E1 mechanism. It basically forces a cat carbocation. So the bromine will leave and form essentially a bond with a silver molecule, or atom, I mean. And so what we'll get is this right here with a carbocation right there. Now this is a secondary carbocation. And over here, we have a tertiary carbon. Well, this hydrogen then, what it can do is it can move there. It's called a hydride shift. And with this hydride shift, we'd end up with this molecule, with a carbocation on a tertiary carbon. And that way, it'll be much easier or it'll be more stable for a methanol molecule to attack this, remove its hydrogen with another methanol molecule, and you get this molecule right here. And so, oh, and I forgot the extra carbon on that ethanol. And now for the third reaction, we have water and heat. Now with heat, we know it'll force, not rather force, but it'll improve the chances of iodine becoming a better leaving group and leaving on its own and you get this molecule right here with a positive charge. Now this is secondary carbon, and here have a quaternary carbon. So could we do a hydride shift? No, but what we could do is something called a methyl shift. We can move a methyl group, and so what ends up happening is we get this molecule, and we have a carbocation on a tertiary carbon right there. And now water molecules can come in like here, like so. It acts as a weak nucleophile, it simply attacks the carbocation and we'll have an oxygen with two hydrogen with three bonds and so one other mole water molecule will take away one of those hydrogens and our final product will look something like this simply a tertiary alcohol now what about this last one well this last one you still have silver nitrate and water so we know that chlorine is going to be forced to leave so chlorine will leave and we end up getting this molecule right here so let's try to draw this properly. We have this molecule and we have a carbocation on a primary carbon. Now, that's pretty unstable. A primary carbocation is really unstable. So what we could do is do some sort of methyl shift or hydride shift. Now, do we have any hydrogens on a carbon next to us? No, but we have methyl groups. Well, we could do something is something called a ring expansion. So ring expansion is just like a methyl shift, except that we're just expanding the ring. So either we can move this carbon here and make expand the ring over there, or we can move this carbon there. So let's just do this top one and move it over here. So what would end up happening is we'd get this molecule with a two carbon ring on the top and we have a carbocation right there. Now, since we have a carbocation right there, what ends up happening is our water molecule will come in like normal and one of its lone pairs will come and attack this, and our final product will look something like this. We have a bicyclic molecule with obviously a alcohol group. Now, what about the second hydrogen? Well, it just simply got removed by another water molecule. So the four examples of SN1 reaction we just showed here was a regular SN1 reaction, where simply you just have a carbocation and the molecule comes in. The second example is a hydride shift for a rearrangement. The third example is a methyl shift, which is a type of rearrangement. The fourth example was a ring expansion, which is another type of rearrangements.